if you just throw a spreadsheet at them and throw some numbers on them, it's not really convincing. You have to tell them a story. You have to tell them why this is important. You need to tell them how this is going to positively impact the members. You need to get them to buy into your analysis and and be a part of it rather than just be like, hey, we found a mistake with your product. Go fix it. That's not how we work. From the cubicle to the lab, the studio to the war room, climbing the corporate ladder or joining a scrappy startup, experience a day in the life of the jobs you want. This is the Experience a Day in the Life podcast. We interview professionals, entrepreneurs, and recent grads about what a day is actually like on the job, hour by hour, or as we like to call it, their a diddle, spelled A-D-I-T-L, which stands for a day in the life. This podcast will inspire you to gain experience beyond the classroom and launch a career of your own. We're your hosts, Chris DeBeau and Matt Poe. Welcome to part one in the two-part data deep dive series. In this episode, we're going to experience a day in the life hour by hour of Avinash Ahuja, a data scientist at LinkedIn, so you can decide if this is a career you can see yourself doing. Avinash's job is to make sure the users of LinkedIn are having the best experience possible, seeing the posts they want to see, the jobs they want to apply for, and the people they want to connect with. That's all done by the data science experiments and machine learning algorithms that Avinash and his team works with. Let's get right into the day and learn how he does it. It's 7 a.m. in Sunnyvale, California, and Avinash is starting his day. First things first is he pops on NPR's Up First podcast and checks three things. How his stocks are doing, what's on his calendar for the day, and the status of his analysis. More on that in a second, but let's meet Avinash and learn more about what he does at LinkedIn. My name is Avinash Ahuja, and I'm a data scientist at LinkedIn. I just also moved to the machine learning team, so my title has now changed to software engineer or machine learning engineer at LinkedIn. As a data scientist at LinkedIn, uh, my job and my role is to help make data-driven decisions for all our products. So that's what data scientists throughout LinkedIn do. And the product that I was working with was Marketplace Dynamics, where I helped understand how the supply and demand within LinkedIn's various marketplaces affect our product. And then later I moved on to working on other products where we would focus on the international part of LinkedIn's product and how we impact our international members and certain other kinds of segments of members as well. Can you just define what marketplace dynamics means? Sure. So any marketplace has two components, supply and demand. And there is an inherent equilibrium in any given marketplace, the right amount of supply and the right amount of demand. So you have a bunch of jobs on LinkedIn, you have a bunch of people who are applying for jobs on LinkedIn, and you have a bunch of recruiters who are looking for suitable candidates for positions they're trying to close. So trying to understand where there is a lack of skill and talent and what recruiters want and trying to balance that is, is kind of what we try to do in marketplace dynamics. You know as well, probably better than us, there's a lot of buzz around, you know, the words data science, machine learning, AI. Can you give us a little about how each of those terms relate to one another and also differ? Sure. So given the technology that is proliferated throughout our lives, we have so much data that is being collected by ourselves. For instance, our Fitbit trackers and, you know, our cell phones, we are collecting so much data. And companies are also collecting a lot of data. And this is to help make better products. The whole art of making better products using data is data science. And now data science has a lot of different parts that constitute data science. Some of them are just defining what is your KPI, what is your metric. KPI is key performance indicator. And and how do you measure the success of your product? How do you measure different aspects of your product? How do you, you know, target the right thing to the right users? How do you target the right content to the right users? How do you make sure the users are having a good error-free experience? Making sure maybe there is no lag in your product, making sure if there's a lag in your product, which kind of users are experiencing it and then being able to debug that. That is data science. If you're rolling out a new feature, you know, you roll it out as an experiment. You test it on users before you actually roll it out to all of your users. That is also data science, experimentation, 
statistical analysis, causal analysis. So machine learning is a part of data science where we use this data that is collected about users to predict what they are going to like and then maybe recommend what they might like to read or listen to. So let me give you an example about LinkedIn's feed. When you go on LinkedIn's feed, you see a bunch of articles in front of you, right? How do we decide which articles to show to you? That is machine learning. An example of data science would be is, let's analyze what kind of posts users in America like. So do they like posts with images? Do they like posts with content or just text? So we try to analyze what kind of content on LinkedIn, you know is liked by users in general and then try to improve our product and the product performance based on that. So that would be data science. Back to the day. So as he's getting ready in the morning, he's checking to see if the analysis he ran the night before has either succeeded or failed. What that means is he's analyzing the data sets at LinkedIn and understanding how specific users would react to a new feature. We can't get into the specifics about what this new feature is because it's still in testing mode, but we will talk about the step-by-step process Avinash and the data scientists at LinkedIn follow to experiment and improve LinkedIn's user experience. By the way, it failed this morning, so he'll be working on how to fix that later on in the day. He leaves for work at 8.15 and is at LinkedIn's beautiful campus by 8.30. Depending on the weather and temperature, he'll either bike, drive, or carpool to the office with NPR's Planet Money or the Indicator podcast playing. After dropping off his things at his desk, he heads over to the cafeteria for coffee and breakfast, all free for employees, by the way. It's nice because this way we really get to bond with our colleagues and discuss certain things with our teammates over breakfast or over a quick coffee without having to worry about any of the logistics. So 8.30, I walk into the cafe, grab some breakfast, usually scrambled eggs or oats. I hate oats, but sometimes I just eat them to, you know, be healthy. And yeah, LinkedIn has the best food I've seen in any of the companies so far. And then what's what's your personal workspace like? Do you have your own office or is it a common workspace? So the desks at LinkedIn, there is no offices. It's all open workspaces. So even senior managers and everybody share the same open workspace, which fosters communication and collaboration. But at the same time, LinkedIn acknowledges that sometimes you want to have a quiet space and we have a lot of conference room and spaces available to our disposal where we can go get some quiet time and and have some focus time if needed. Every engineer data scientist at LinkedIn has like this huge sit-stand desk. So if you want to stand and work, we can stand and work. We don't have to worry about that. And we have a dual screen set up with our own desktop tower as well. So if I want to run some analysis locally, I have this huge machine where I I can do some analysis. So you reached your desk by 9.15 and let us know what's going on. Give us the lowdown. So I check my inbox. I check my messages, my metric dashboards, again, my analysis status and get up to speed on any developments that we've had since the previous day. So this could be like tickets, error messages, analysis, success reports, or any other work that's come up from our stakeholders. Based on that, I prioritize the major and minor things to be done for that day. So you you mentioned a metrics dashboard. What is Mm -hmm. that? So as a data scientist, the first thing for data science is we need to make sure we are collecting the data properly, right? And every morning, it's kind of like checking the stock market, except that over here, it's our internal metrics where we check like, hey, are all the internal systems that I'm an owner of working correctly, are the numbers looking good? And let's say I'm looking at how many people visited the site yesterday and I see like, hey, the numbers don't add up. And is this an issue with maybe the tracking? Was the website down yesterday? Was there something in our data pipeline that's broken, that's reporting incorrect numbers? What is it? So if the numbers don't pass a just sanity check or an eyeball check, we deep dive into that and try to find out if that's an issue with the website or that's issue with some of our tooling or what's going on over there. So it's it's just a sanity check, make sure everything's working as it's as it is supposed to be. 
After he's finished reviewing his emails and results from the metrics dashboard, it's now 10 a.m. and he's having a weekly meeting with his manager. In this meeting, he's discussing the progress he's making on three key projects he's working on this quarter. These projects are going to reflect the rest of his work for this day. The first project was improving an existing feature in one of our search machine learning algorithms. This algorithm helps recruiters find suitable candidates for their hiring needs. The second project that I'm working on is a deep dive analysis for a product team to understand how a certain subset of members are using and interacting with our product. And finally, I'm also working on developing a tool that would help reduce time spent on routine analysis by 30% for data scientists at LinkedIn by abstracting certain tasks. So let's break down what that means. There are certain tasks that data scientists routinely perform on data. And Avinash told us that some of these tasks are data cleaning, removing or extrapolating missing data and transforming that data into one format or another. What he also added about the nuance of these tasks was that they change from data set to data set. But at LinkedIn, they know the kind and type of data that they're dealing with. So they can take these routine tasks and customize them to LinkedIn specifications using programs like Python and Scala. Remember, his role and the company's goal is to improve the user's experience. And the faster they can get that done, the better the product is for everyone. Let's go back to this first one. You're talking about this project that's improving the search function. How does this project get to you? Where does it originate this idea that we need to improve this function and now we're going to give it over to Avinash to do his work with it? So LinkedIn has a very go-getter mindset on problem solving. We are encouraged to find problems on our own and solve them. And yes, there are sometimes company-wide projects that you get handed as a part of the broader system that might need improvement or is identified by the leadership. That's something that we need to work on. Something that me and my colleague were working on in analysis, she found a certain pattern that didn't make sense. And when we looked into that, we realized like, hey, maybe we can address this issue by improving the machine learning algorithm. So then we reached out to the machine learning algorithm team. We spoke to them. We had a few brainstorming sessions on what could possibly be going wrong over here. Or if there's nothing going wrong, but is there something we can improve? And this was something that we just cross collaborate with the machine learning team and put it on our agenda and to-do list. On to the second project that Avinash is working on, which is a deep dive analysis for a specific product team. We asked him what kind of data is collected and how it's collected, and he said that LinkedIn has multiple systems that capture various user data, but that data captured might not be usable directly in the format that it was captured and stored. So they have systems that can transform this data into usable formats for analysis or machine learning. The result of interconnected data systems are called data pipelines. So what we track is how the users are engaging on the site. This can be on the home page, it can be on the jobs page or any other page. And what we try to estimate is what is this user's intent? What are they trying to do and how can we help them with that? So if we identify that, hey, you're a job searcher, we are going to, you know, identify that and we are going to recommend better products and better job search experience for you because we know that, hey, you're looking for jobs. And based on that, and if we realize like, hey, you're here for content based on your browsing experience on what you click as like or what you comment, we are going to improve the feed experience for you. So that is what we do. And that is common throughout all major technology companies. There are a bunch of different data pipelines that capture all this information and transform it. And eventually we get the data. But again, keeping in mind members' privacy None of the data scientists can see the member's name, member's email address. None of member's personal information is available to any of the data scientists. We do not base any of our decisions on that. What we have is only like maybe, let's say, your school information, your company that you're working for, and all the information that you've already put on your public profile is what we use to drive our decisions. So for the third project you're working on this quarter, it's a tool to improve routine analysis, right? Can you tell us how you came up with that idea? So I'm a lazy person and I have no uh, qualms admitting that. So as much as possible, I try to automate my work and whatever I do repeatedly multiple times, I try to automate that. I try to script it out, write some code for it so that I don't have to do that manually anymore. 
And that is where my ideas kind of come from, which is why you see me interested in optimization problems. So this was just by talking to other data scientists. This was not through a thorough, you know, analysis, data right. analysis, because <laughs> you need to draw a fine line somewhere. You can't keep analyzing everything to the most minute detail. So I spoke around with some of my colleagues, you know, had a uh, chats with them and ask them like how much time are you spending doing the certain task and would it help if there was a feature like this and just talk to them and then show them what I've built and ask them their feedback for it and and then just keep improving the product. So Avinash is not only working on tasks to improve LinkedIn's user experience, he's also working on projects to improve the workflow of LinkedIn employees. Now it's 10.30 a.m. and Avinash checks his messages and analysis. At 10.45, he meets with colleagues for coffee. So when you first started working at LinkedIn, were you ever hesitant to leave your desk to take a break? I know that's a thing for some people at large companies. I wasn't that hesitant to leave my desk, but I was hesitant about something else. I was hesitant to reach out to people and talk to them. Because in my head, I was like, oh my God, these guys are being paid, you know, like so many dollars an hour, you know, which is like in hundreds or whatever. And if I waste, you know, like just talk to them for half an hour, I'm wasting company's time, I'm wasting their time, I'm wasting resources. And that was a challenge I had to overcome, especially while trying to talk to senior people. And and, and I had to abstract them away from the monetary value or whatever it is to just be like, hey, they are somebody else in the company and maybe we could get a great idea out of this conversation. And it, it took me some time. It took me like six months to be comfortable to schedule a meeting with anybody I wanted to. But once I was there, there were so many good ideas that have come out of these coffee conversations that just overshadow the value that might have gone into it. So 10.45 on this day was his focus time until lunch at noon, and he was focusing on tasks for the first project of the quarter he mentioned, improving an existing feature in one of LinkedIn's search machine learning algorithms. He told us that there's a four-step process data scientists at LinkedIn follow. Today, he's working on steps three and four, but let's start from step one, which is analysis and value proposition. So by value proposition, we mean what benefit will this bring to the member? How does this improve the member experience? So every time we start solving a problem at LinkedIn, we always ask this question about what value are we generating for the member? Is it a faster website? Is it a better quality of search results? Is it a better browsing experience? What is it that we're bringing to the member? Step two is data collection, labeling that data and engineering the features to experiment with that data. Now, LinkedIn has over 600 million members, so there's at least 600 million data points to look at. But he doesn't want to work with all of that data. So in this step, he's basically cleaning the data for what he has to do with it. So by cleaning data over here, you can think about it as, uh, you know, peeling an onion, right? You have your data, but you need to like remove the fluff that you don't need. Sometimes you have uh, what is called as tracking issues and the data has certain garbage values in it and you need to filter those out. You need to understand what type of values are garbage values and what are not important for you. So data cleaning and collection can take easily 50% of the time because sometimes, uh, uh, the data is incorrect and you need to correct it or find different dates on which the data is available that suits your need. This definitely takes a lot of time and data cleaning and data munging is easily 50% of any data scientist's work. We were having a hard time visualizing what this process looks like, especially when Avinash is working on step two. None of that data he's working with is on his laptop or computer for privacy reasons. He told us he accesses it through LinkedIn's cluster, which allows them to run data analysis in a distributed way. The simple definition of a cluster is when data seems to be gathered around a particular value. And we have a queue system where data scientists and machine learning engineers can submit their jobs to be run on this cluster. What we do is we, we take a few lines of the data. So we know what the data looks like and what the values are. So some of it we do copy into a like, uh, you know, authorized spreadsheet where we just look at what is the format of the data. 
and then we work with the data without actually looking at it. So we write code for manipulating the data and and uh, modifying the data and joining the data. And then again, we just see a few lines of the end product and then the rest of it is there. I can send you some screenshots later on that I have which are authorized. Check out these screenshots on the show notes page for this series at xadiddle.com. Now back to his tasks at 1045, working on step three and four. So step three is a machine learning step, which Avinash does a way better job of explaining what that actually means using LinkedIn's Jimby product as an example. Jimby, spelled J-Y-M-B-I-I, stands for jobs you might be interested in. So in uh, any data science or machine learning problem, they can be categorized into two problems. One is a forward-looking problem. One is a backward-looking problem. A forward-looking problem would be a prediction problem. If I'm trying to predict jobs that you, Matt, might be interested in. So if you go to the LinkedIn's job page, you'll see a carousel of jobs. And uh, the title is probably like recommended jobs or something like that. And we call this product internally as Jimby, jobs you might be interested in. And uh, this product, we try to use machine learning to evaluate what jobs are going to be fit for Matt based on the profile data you have entered, maybe based on your past job search and the jobs that you have applied to. So we try to train our machine learning models based on that and then recommend jobs that we think you are a good fit for or you might be interested in. So that is a forward-looking problem, right? We are predicting things for you. And in data science, what we do is we use the same machine learning models, but also to understand what is the most predictive like what part of Matt's behavior is most predictive of the jobs he's interested in. So that would be like, okay, it looks like Matt follows Microsoft on LinkedIn. Maybe he likes Microsoft products. Let's recommend jobs from Microsoft to Matt. So we try to make that connection. Or if we see that, hey, you like a lot of Bill Gates post or you like a lot of other technology companies that might be similar to Microsoft, we use that data. To, to recommend, you know, in the machine learning algorithm, but we also need to identify what patterns are most predictive of, of these recommendations. So that would be a part of data science. Like, is it the part that where Matt is following Microsoft or is it the part that Matt is connected with a lot of Microsoft employees and he's reaching out to them? So at this point for step three, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're mm-hmm. you're taking the data you're, that you've collected and you've labeled and you're trying to make sense of it all and how it relates to your data set that you have. To simplify that process, you're using machine learning models like you just talked about. But first, you have to train the models, right? Mm-hmm. And then yes. you go from there to verify it. Can you talk to us about how you train those models? Given the scale at which LinkedIn operates, training and deploying models is quite challenging. We have hundreds of models at LinkedIn, each with their own set of constraints and challenges. So to help this, we have a number of in-house tools that we rely on to prepare the data for the model and then training it. Some models can be trained in a few hours while others take a couple of days depending on the model complexity. A few places where we use these models are in recommending relevant jobs for members on the platform, uh, for recommending connections that would improve your experience on LinkedIn, and uh, to recommend content on your feed. LinkedIn's engineering blog is a great resource if you want to learn more about this. So from the top, step one is analysis and value proposition. Step two is data collection, labeling, engineering, and experimenting with that data. Step three is machine model learning. And finally, step four is validating the metric in its ecosystem. So step four in this case, after they've added the new feature to the machine learning model and trained it, they A-B test it against the current model that's in the system. Some of these tests can be testing improvements in the layout of our website or new features or like in our case, a new model. We can compare the performance of the current model to the new model. We compare the models by evaluating metrics that are important to that particular use case. If all the numbers look good, we deploy the model. If not, we go back to the drawing board and see what's wrong. And if there's anything else we can improve. So for example, if the new model is really good at search, but is extremely slow, we would not use it as we don't want our users to have a slow experience on LinkedIn. They have hundreds of A-B tests running at LinkedIn at any given time, by the way. Now it's noon and it's time for lunch. Avinash and his coworkers grab lunch from the cafeteria, also free by the way, and head to the conference room where the data science department at LinkedIn presents their progress and projects, or it could be a review of results from completed projects. 
Generally, during these reviews, LinkedIn teams will, one, review the methodology, two, review the data being used, three, check if the right questions are being asked, and four, review what happens with the different scenarios they might end up observing. So in this forum, feedback is exchange, which is why Avinash thinks refining soft skills as a data scientist are just as important as refining the hard skills. So one thing that I didn't learn in school is how to structure my presentations and how to tell a story. And a big part of data science is to convince people with your analysis. And if you just throw a spreadsheet at them and throw some numbers on them, it's not really convincing. You have to tell them a story. You have to tell them why this is important. You need to tell them how this is going to positively impact the members. You need to get them to buy into your analysis and and be a part of it rather than just be like, hey, we found a mistake with your product. Go fix it. That's not how we work. So storytelling is a very important part of data science, and it's very similar to a startup pitching their idea to venture capitalists, right? You need to be able to get them to feel the energy and the motivation for the product or for the analysis that you have done and convince them that this is important and useful. 115 rolls around and Avinash syncs up with a colleague to discuss tasks pending for their deep dive, which is the second project he's working on this quarter. They have some findings that are very counterintuitive. He couldn't give us specifics, but Avinash told us this could either be some new behavior that they observed or it could be a bug in their analysis. So they spent half an hour double checking the code, making sure there weren't any glaring issues. Speaking of code, they use Git version control and code review to ensure their code quality and that there are no bugs in their analysis. So it's 145 and you're playing ping pong with your teammates. Can Mm -hmm. you talk to us about just the LinkedIn company culture in general? And do you think that company culture should be a big factor for students looking into their first job? So yes, students should look for company culture and make sure that their values are aligned with the company values because it would be very difficult for you to go into work every day for a company that you don't align with. Playing ping pong with teammates. So LinkedIn has game rooms throughout the campus. You know, every building has at least one game room and we have ping pong tables, uh, PS4s, Xbox. We even have a Dance Dance Revolution machine in one of the game rooms. So, and what this does is more than ping pong, it's more like a team bonding exercise where we are actually talking about work stuff while we are playing ping pong. And it gives us this kind of off-screen time because we are spending so much time in front of the computer screens. It allows us to think in a more different way and talk about the same problems and gives us better insight to the problems that we are thinking about. And once we get away from the screen, we are probably, you know, even more receptive to information and ideas because we are talking to people face to face and we are doing some activity on the side, right? That's keeping our motor skills engaged. So LinkedIn definitely encourages that. And LinkedIn has an amazing culture of work-life balance and I've enjoyed my two years working with LinkedIn. So it's uh, 2.15 now. I meet up with an engineer from the machine learning team to help me with some issues I'm having with my analysis. So we made some changes to our pipeline to generate more data for the model. Usually more data is better, but it turns out that out of the 80 plus GB of the data that I was feeding to my model, 50% was not relevant and and overloading the system memory. And it was causing the analysis to fail. And once we discovered that bug and fixed it, the analysis was running smoothly again, and we were seeing the results that we were expecting. From 3 to 4 p.m., Avinash is having a whiteboard session with his teammate about the analysis tool they were working on, a.k.a. project number three this quarter. In this session, there's a lot of discussion about how they should structure the tool. What are the best possible set of inputs, possible errors they can encounter, things like that. They're going to use Spark and Scala to build the tool that would run on LinkedIn's massive Hadoop cluster, which stores and analyzes huge amounts of unstructured data in a distributed computing environment. So Scala is a programming language just like Java and Python. And Spark is a tool for doing analysis on large amounts of data. And the thing with Spark is it's an open source system and anybody could use it to analyze their data or work with their data. And the best part about Spark is it can run on one computer or it can run on a thousand computers and and you don't have to worry about the computers talking to each other, it manages that for you. So when you have data that doesn't fit on one computer, you, you use Spark and it distributes the work of analysis among the different computers and it manages them automatically. So that is Spark. 
And we use that a lot because we have so much data and it doesn't fit on one computer. 4 to 4.30, Avinash is meeting with the project manager for the Deep Dive project to update him on the work and findings so far. And at 4.30, he's taking that feedback and findings from today and incorporating it into a presentation he'll be giving later that week. He's out the door by 5.30. But before we go, I had to ask. So this is a topic that's kind of always in question on blogs, with companies, just with users in general on the LinkedIn feed. Can you share with us some insights that users can um, align with LinkedIn's algorithm to like optimize their posts and blog content? Sure. So the thing is, nobody in LinkedIn would be able to give you that answer because even if we know how the algorithm works, the algorithm is personalized for every user. So it just doesn't take into account what you're posting. It also takes into account what your network wants to read. So so it's, it's not like there is no one size fits all template over here that I have this you know secret recipe to generate the perfect content. It's just be honest don't spread any fluff, don't repost content without crediting the original author and things like that. Just just be honest, just be yourself on LinkedIn. That will help you get the best results because if you share your stories honestly, there are people out there who empathize and have gone through the same thing but are probably not talking about it because they don't want to be maybe singled out or shy or afraid of sharing their experiences because it might be negative or embarrassing in some kind of way. So just be honest, just be open, and that will give you the best possible content experience on LinkedIn. So you just experienced a day in the life of a data scientist at LinkedIn, but how does one actually become a data scientist? In part two of the Data Deep Dive series, join us as we go through Avinash Ahuja's career journey and experiences leading up to where he is today. He was well into his career as a civil engineer before he made the move to the United States and dove into data science in grad school, which goes to show it's never too late to make a pivot. Stay tuned. At Experience a Day in the Life, we're building an online library of content all focused on a diddle or a day in the life of different jobs and professions across the world in all different industries. So if you want to share your a diddle, you can do so at xadiddle.com slash share dash my dash a diddle. That's x-a-d-i-t-l dot com slash share dash my dash a-d-i-t-l. Thanks for listening. Head over to exadiddle.com. That's X-A-D-I-T-L.com. There you can find the show notes for this series and more A Day in the Life articles. And you can get to know us and our guests more by joining our communities on social media. Follow at exadiddle on Instagram and on LinkedIn by searching for Krista Bowe and Matt with one T Poe. If you learned something in this episode, please take some time to help our mission by leaving a positive rating and review of the show. Each week, we bring you a new interview series with guests from different jobs and different industries. In each series, we'll live a specific day in the life, hour by hour, and experience their career journey. So don't forget to subscribe.